Hey guys, welcome to my first drive video of the Alfa Romeo Giulia Quadrifoglio. I say first drive, that's a little bit of a lie because almost two years ago, I was on one of Tim's fuel faction trips and we actually had an Italian press car out there that was a Giulia Quadrifoglio, except that car was unfortunately a manual version. I say that because the manual box in that particular car was a real letdown and I'd heard so many good things about the auto version, which this one is, with the ZF 8-speed gearbox. In the UK, you can thankfully only spec it with the ZF 8-speed, so I'm really excited and interested to get behind the wheel of this one. The Giulia Quadrifoglio has the familiar 2.9-litre V6 bi-turbo engine that was in the Stelvio Quadrifoglio that I had in Italy September last year. So that's over 500 horsepower, but in this car, it all goes through the rear wheels, whereas in the Stelvio, it was amongst the four wheels. So it's gonna be interesting, especially this time of year, it's about three degrees outside, at least the sun's out and it's fairly dry on the roads. As this is a UK press car, I think we should have a quick look over the spec, jump inside, have a look around the interior, give it a start up and then go for our first drive. The Stelvio Quadrifoglio retails at about £62,000 here in the UK. This particular car has about £5,000 worth of options on it. And they consist of the Vesuvio grey metallic paintwork, darkened rear glass, red brake calipers, 19 inch dark alloy wheels, leather and Alcantara flat bottom sports steering wheel, electric seats, convenience pack which consists of lights underneath the door handles and keyless entry and finally it has active cruise control bringing the total on the road price for this car to about £67,000 so jumping inside let's have a quick look around the cabin the first thing that I notice is unfortunately this particular press car doesn't have the carbon shell bucket seats, which I absolutely love. Uh, they're made by Sparco and they're outstanding. They're in the Stelvio Quadrifoglio that I had in Italy at the end of last year, and they just make all the difference for the cabin. They are 3,200 pounds, but there's a few things in this car that you could strip out and I would option. So you could get rid of the electric seats that are about 1,000 pounds. You could get rid of the active cruise control which I find annoying in pretty much all cars anyway. Uh, you get rid of the convenience pack because keyless entry, hmm, I'm not the biggest fan of. Get rid of those three and you pretty much got the sports seats, the bucket seats. But anyway, let's jump in. It's a very clean, very clean looking cabin. You've got analog dials. There's a digital display in the middle there that, that comes to life when you start the car up. This is where all the infotainment system is, but when it's turned off, you see it's lovely and black, and in fact, it just looks, all flows very well in here. All very simple, it's, it's uncluttered. So you've got all your infotainment, navigation controls here. You've got your fairly familiar looking um, gear selector there that all lights up when it turns on. You've got your drive mode control here you've got all your climate controls and stuff down there. There's a fair amount of room in here. You can quite easily get four adults in here. The rear is a little bit tight for headspace for really tall adults like myself, but it's pretty spacious all the same. This is the sports Alcantara leather steering wheel. You've got some nice carbon inlays there as well. Uh, you've got the start stop button there. You've got your normal controls, you know, radio voice control, telephone control, then all your cruise stuff over this side. So let's fire it up. When you start it up normally, it fires up in normal mode. So it's actually quite quiet. And when you rev it, it's actually pretty quiet. We'll just switch to the outside now so you can hear what that sounds like. Then you put it over into race mode. 
and that comes up there. You can instantly hear the exhaust valves opening. Now you give it a rev. And it sounds much more like you'd expect a 500 horsepower car to sound. The problem with it being in race mode in this particular car, or even in the Stelvio, is it turns off all traction aids. So, traction control, stability control are off. So you're on your own basically, which in the Stelvio I actually talked about in that review and said that it's not too much of an issue because you've got all that four-wheel drive grip. I was in Italy at the end of summer, 25 degrees, you know, the tires were warm, it was great. But in this, 510 horsepower on some tires that we'll talk about shortly. <laughs> no traction control or traction aids whatsoever. I'm not sure I've got that much talent. I think we should take this car for a quick drive now. over the last couple of years and for the right reasons too it's an absolute not game changer but it's a car that pretty much came out of nowhere as far as I'm concerned and really put Alfa Romeo back on the map fantastic beautiful looking car as you'd expect with any Alfa Romeo I mean they've, they've never lacked in the looks department but in terms of dynamics this car absolutely arrived on the scene with an absolute storm you know it's it's something that so many people so many journalists talk about and i think it's it's a bit been a reoccurring sort of conversation you know it's it's always been pretty much all positive you do get a few sort of things in here that you expect in an alfa romeo you know the interior the infotainment system etc not what you would expect in a up-to-date, say, 2019 German car, but the trade-off with that is just the character and the soul that this car's got. And no, that's not out of an Alfa Romeo brochure, that's me saying it. it. Really, really has got amazing soul. I'm currently in normal mode. There's a couple of reasons for that. Number one, because this is the first time I've driven this car on UK soil. And, uh, yeah, I just want to get used to it. I've literally driven it half a mile. But mostly because, although I want to get straight into race mode and hear the exhaust and the engine note, um, race in this car switches everything off, as I say earlier on. And everything off in this car, <laughs> that's over 500 horsepower, through the rear wheels. But more on topic, I think, is the actual tyres that this car has. I go on about tyres a lot on my channel, and yes, I am a massive Michelin tyre fan, but other manufacturers make some good tyres, and these tyres, in fact, are the Pirelli P0 Coursers. So they are the high-performance version of the P0s. They're not quite the Trofeos that you get on, say, like the McLaren Senna, but they're sort of in between. I, I would say they're very close to a Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2 tyre. But the difference being with these P0 courses is they are fantastic in the dry, hot weather. When you've got heat in them, like we did in our original press car out in Italy a couple of years ago, they were amazing. Like They, they had so much grip, they were really good tyres. But the trade-off that we soon discovered was when it got wet or when the temperatures cooled down, they were terrible and really, really dangerous. And uh, <laughs> I've already discovered that just easing out of my village, this car seems to want to break traction. The first thing that stands out to me is the ride quality. It's just amazing. 
amazing. It's it's floating over everything. These are my local roads. I know them inside out, and I know that this particular dual carriageway is really bumpy, and um, yeah, and the car moves all over the place normally, and something stiff. Even like that M5 competition I had recently, you could feel every sort of bump and every crack in the road, and there's plenty of cracks in the road around here because we're in South Bucks, the worst and the most expensive council in the whole of the UK. Uh, they just take all of our money and they never seem to put it anywhere, but that's a totally different subject as I get stuck behind a Prius. I mean, I'm doing, this is a 70 mile an hour national speed limit road. I'm doing 42 miles an hour. Oh, he's, oh he must have heard me. He must have heard me. Oh, I do feel sorry for people that drive around in Priuses, so fair play, mate. Let's, uh, let's at least put it into manual and uh, let's just go around this roundabout, so in third. You've got lovely big paddles in here. And I say lovely big paddles, I never used to be a fan of the fixed paddles in um, in cars. I'm always, you know, one that likes paddles on steering wheels and stuff. But I have to say, after spending a good week and a half in the Stelvio Quadrifoglio that had the same setup, I really began to like the big long paddles. And you know where they are all the time, they're always there. So if you're sort of crossed up, you know where the paddles are. And they just feel nice. They're, they're big, chunky aluminium paddles. Um, which, you know, even in expensive M cars or even in that R8 that I had at the end of last year, you got horrible little plastic paddles. Um, so, so there is some really nice quality features in here. The wheel feels lovely, the paddles feel lovely. Everything is where you need it to be. The driving position is really, really good, like on par with BMW. I am gutted that it doesn't have the, I forgot what they're called, the Sparco something shell seats <laughs> I will put it across the screen but I am gutted that it doesn't have those seats just because firstly they look unbelievable secondly they actually give you a bit more cabin space because they're very thin but in terms of comfort and support these things feel quite supportive uh, I wouldn't say they're the most comfortable things in the world let's see if we can get this guy out of the way there we go wake up mate right so let's just oh whoa oh <laughs> forget how magic this engine is absolute just the low down torque and the power delivery the smooth power delivery thankfully smooth power delivery because with the with the p0 courses <laughs> if you didn't have smooth power delivery you'd be in a bit of trouble in this thing but fifth gear and it absolutely pulls like a train like an absolute train the performance figures in this car are 0 to 60 in 3.9 seconds. 3.9 seconds for a rear wheel drive car. You wouldn't be doing that in a day like today, but 3.9 seconds. Top speed, 191 miles an hour. Yeah, that's right. This is a four seater family car that would do 191 miles an hour. That is insane. Like literally madness, but yep, yeah, it will do it. And in terms of economy, the claimed combined figure is around the 35 miles to the gallon mark, which to me doesn't sound too bad for something that can do over 190 miles an hour. And I know actually from driving the Stelvio several thousand miles in Italy at the end of last year that it does get very close to the claimed figures when you're not booting it. When you're booting it, this engine drinks like you've never experienced before like it really drinks but you know what do you expect for a car with this much performance into race go oh there you go <laughs> so <laughs> so that was that was naught to 70 miles an hour and a lot of tire smoke First and second, there's just nothing. It's just like, bah, bah. and in fact, when I engaged third, I came off the accelerator a little bit because I didn't want it to start spinning up top of third gear. Um, <laughs> not the most sensible thing in the world, but at least we know we've got a little bit of tire temperature in the back wheels now. So I'm a bit more confident with this car, but even in race mode with the stiff suspension, it still feels like there is suspension, which is a good thing, but the, the, you've always got a 
bumpy road button down here, that's what I call it anyway. So we press that, you can still be in race and you can soften things up. So now I'm in race, everything else is racy. I've got no traction control, etc. on, but I've got the softer, more pliant suspension, which for the UK is a mode that you're probably always gonna be in. Couple of initial gripes on this first drive video that I have to say, the infotainment system is not great especially compared to you know some of the cars that I'm used to driving. But like I said, there's a big trade-off for that because the rest of the car as a package is just unbelievable. My other slight gripe with this car is the fact that unfortunately there's no exhaust button in here or there's no other mode that will open the exhaust flap. So a bit like my M2 competition, you can't turn off the auto blip function in the manual car without disengaging everything. The same goes with this car that only when you're in race, which disengages all traction and safety aids, only in race is when you get the exhaust flaps open. So you either have sound and have it in full race, slightly dangerous mode on the road, or you just have the flaps closed. And that's a shame because I, I like to drive around, you know, I want to hear this engine. It's it's really nice. Let's, let's, just, um, let's just accelerate out of here. I've still got everything off, so I'm going to take it fairly easy. But listen to this. It's really, really fast, this car. And I know I've said that about a few cars recently, but I wouldn't be surprised if this is as quick as the M5 competition is in a straight line. And I know that it's got just over 100 brake horsepower less, but it's also about 450 kilos lighter, which is a massive, massive weight advantage, you know? Having that much less weight, that's like, that's like four and a half of me less. So it should feel a lot more agile and it does. It feels far more alive. Um, let's just turn that down back into the soft mode, come into this roundabout. Let's just see how it goes through here. Everything's still off, so I'm gonna take it easy. I can feel the back already wanting to move around. The tires are just, it's such a nice car though. gearbox is great it really feels good it's the way they've engineered this zf8 speed it almost feels like a soft version of a sequential box it really chucks it in the gear but it doesn't seem to unsettle it too much so it's not like a dct box where you get that thump and it can unsettle the car you just get a very yeah very engaging and very addictive sound and feel when you change through the gears. This car has the standard brake setup on it, which seems to be pretty good. You can get the carbon ceramics, but I think they're about 6,000 pounds. To me, I mean, unless you really need them, that's a lot of money for a 60,000 pound car. That's 10% of the car just on a brake upgrade, which seems a little bit mental. Oh, oh, oh. Listen to that. It's just fantastic, isn't it? Oh, what is that? That's an old um, Mitsubishi something or other. guys that has been my first drive video as with the m5 competition please leave any comments questions below let me know if there's anything you want me to cover in the full review of this car and if you want to see more on Alfa Romeo's I'll put a link to my original Giulia Quadrifoglio review in Italy in the manual car and I'll also put a link to my fairly recent Stelvio Quadrifoglio review, which I did in Italy at the end of last year, which hasn't really got that many views, and I put a lot of time and effort into that video, and I really like it. So I'll link both of those videos below. Check them out. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this first drive video. And uh, yeah, please make sure you subscribe if you, um, if you haven't already. I'll see you soon and at the next video. Take it easy, cheers.